Hello, my name is Suzanne Landy. I'm a current PhD candidate in epidemiology at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. On behalf of my co-authors, I'm pleased to present a summary of our manuscript titled, No Increase in Acute Myocardial Infarction Risk in Proton Pump Inhibitor Versus Histamine 2 Receptor Antagonist Users. Proton pump inhibitors, or PPIs, are among the most commonly used medications in the U.S. In 2014, there were 75 million prescriptions for the PPI and Meprazole. PPIs treat a number of conditions like gastroesophageal reflux disease or peptic ulcers and provide substantial relief from symptoms that impair a patient's quality of life. PPIs are also now available over the counter, and this means that PPI exposure is increasingly widespread and ensuring the safety of these medications is a priority. In 2009, the FDA alerted users of the PPI of Meprazole and the anticoagulant clopidogrel that these medications may interact in a way that makes clopidogrel less effective, leading to a potential increased risk of cardiovascular events. Researchers then wondered if PPI use may be independently associated with an increased risk of MI. A recent study using data mining approaches in electronic medical records showed an increased risk of MI among people who had used PPIs versus non-users. The findings were alarming to physicians and their patients, and unfortunately, studies that compare drug users to non-users may suffer from a number of biases. We decided to use pharmacoepidemiologic methods that are designed to reduce bias to uh, investigate whether or not PPIs increase an individual's risk of MI. We conducted an observational cohort study using administrative insurance claims from January 2001 through December 2014 from the Truven Health Analytics Market Scan Research Database. This database contains inpatient, outpatient, and pharmaceutical claims and encounter data linked with patient demographic and enrollment information for over 77 million covered lives in the U.S. We use data from commercial plans that represent adults aged 18 to 64 and Medicare supplemental plans that represent adults aged 65 and older. We studied people who started taking PPIs and excluded people with a recorded diagnosis of MI uh, before starting that PPI. We compared new PPI users to new users of a similar medication, histamine 2 receptor antagonists, or H2RAs. H2RAs are also used to treat gastroesophageal reflux disease, and so patients taking PPIs and H2RAs likely share many health and lifestyle characteristics. We identified PPI and H2RA users from claims for prescription fills. For our primary analysis, we considered an individual under treatment until they stopped the medication, switched to the comparator medication group, or had an MI. As a secondary analysis, we considered an individual under the same treatment that they started on continuously, regardless of switching or stopping. We used validated ICD-9 code-based algorithms to identify MI, and we further attempted to reduce confounding using statistical methods called propensity score weighting. We uh, use Cox proportional hazards models and Kappa-Meyer methods to estimate the crude and weighted incidence of MI. And then we use uh, we estimated risk differences and risk ratios at 3, 12, and 36 months post-initiation following start of a PPI or H2RA. We stratified all analyses by insurance payer uh, so that we analyzed adults under 65 and over 65 separately. In total, we identified over 5 million new users of PPIs and H2RAs. These enrollees were similar with respect to clinical and demographic characteristics, but new users of PPIs were more likely to have a diagnosis of gastroesophageal reflux disease in the year prior to starting their medication than new users of H2RAs. The average follow-up time was relatively short, less than one year overall, when we took medication changes into account. Our risk estimates uh, suggested no difference in the risk of MI when we compared people who started PPIs and H2RAs. We observed similar estimates in uh, subgroup analyses and didn't observe an increased risk of MI associated with PPI versus HTRA use among people recently diagnosed with gastroesophageal reflux disease or uh, people re who had recently filled a prescription for clopidogrel. Contrary to prior literature, we did uh, not observe an increased risk of MI in people starting PPIs compared to H2RAs. The benefit of the study was that it's very large and we were able to study outcomes in over 5 million new users of PPIs and H2RAs from a geographically diverse sample of privately insured U.S. adults. We also use pharmacoepidemiologic methods designed to reduce bias, and physicians and patients should not avoid starting a PPI because of concerns related to MI risk. Thank you.